an impartial jury to try this case. Mm -hmm. What has been injected into this case is issues of race. Um, this whole discussion about whether he's white or whether he's a white Hispanic, all of those things are inflaming the passions at this mm -hmm. point in time. And so when you ask people what justice would look like if Trayvon was to get justice, what they have started saying is that he would be arrested. But here's the question. Are they going to be satisfied if uh, Zimmerman is in fact arrested? If he is arrested and then not indicted, is that going to cause a problem? I think what you've got here is too much political pressure. I think people need to back off, let the authorities do their job in this particular case and come to a conclusion. That's what needs to happen here. May, may, may I ask both of you about the report in the Orlando Sentinel election experts? We've been talking about this morning. Yes. It's, it's really the, the new news of the day here. Would their analysis be able to be presented in a court of law? Does it have the kind of admissible evidence, if you will, to, to do that? It could. It, the answer is there are. you can get a voice exemplar, sure. uh, and there are experts that, that might be able to determine whether uh, it's, uh, uh, it's his voice or not. Again, it, the, the, it's the science. How, good, how, how much do you really hear on the 911 tape? Well, now, yeah. Here's something, though. Also, when, they, when we say, and one point that people are taking a bone of contention with, is that, you know, saying that it's not not the voice of George Zimmerman is one thing, but right. then not saying perfectly 100% sure that it's Trayvon Martins is another. However, hasn't George Zimmerman also said it's just the two of us? Right. So logic right. conclusion. Can you, in a court of law, jump from one point to the state? Well, we don't know for sure it's Trayvon's according to technical scientific information, but duh, it is. This yeah. man has said well, there's only The two thing people. is the people that did the test couldn't get a hold of Trayvon's voice. Now, perhaps his girlfriend or his mother or a relative has a has voicemail it, right. that they can use, but, but the, these experts didn't have access to that. Well, so. I, and, and so, so then thus raising the question as to whether or not it's it is in fact admissible at all. So the lawyers are going to argue as to whether or not it is admissible um, given the number You're of... You're defense attorneys. The, the, gonna, yes, yes, the defense attorneys are going to argue about that. The prosecution may argue about that. We don't know how this is going to be presented. Um, but there are going to be a number of logical leaps as you've indicated here. And I think perhaps those logical leaps may actually be more prejudicial than probative. That raises a whole other question relative to that. So that's a major right. concern here. Uh, it is a major concern, and, and boy, this is a very interesting development today, I have to say. Gentlemen, thank you so much for Thanks. being here, both of you. Jay Fahey, Christopher Metzler.